Today is a special episode of The Rutledge Perspective, and timing couldn't be more divine. It is the month of November, which is Gratitude and Appreciation Month, or that's the month, the way I like to call it. It is the 2nd of November when I'm recording this, which is Election Day, and I'm always fired up on Election Day. So hopefully you guys went to vote wherever you are in this nation that you went to vote today. And then third, this episode is the 100th episode of the Rutledge Perspective podcast. And I am sitting in such gratitude and appreciation and just disbelief that I've actually done 100 of these. It's just beyond anything I ever could have thought. And so what I want to talk about this week is what I talked about on the radio show today, which is using gratitude and appreciation as a foundation for change and movement, right? As a foundation for knowing who you are and where you are and getting clear on what you want to do, but also managing some of the noise and some of the mess, right, in our heads, for those of you who have messy minds like I do. So I want to kind of dive in and and talk about this in this context. It is one of the things that I decided to start doing uh, about a month or so ago is re-up my consistency and my investment in myself with an early morning before I start anything else today, journaling practice. And I've been pretty good. There have been some days that I, I've skipped or haven't gotten it done. So I, I've not by any means been perfect, but I've been really focused on being as consistent as possible in getting that journaling in every day. And starting off my day that way, because what we put in our brains the first thing in the morning really kind of sets the tone for the day. And I always start every entry with what I am grateful for, what I'm thankful for. And that focus on appreciation is a powerful mechanism. And I got to thinking about that both in the context of us individually, which I'll touch on, but also For those of you who are leading teams, for those of you who have um, small teams, big teams, companies that you're leading, whatever that is, those where you have people who are looking to you, what better time than now and then in November to really show appreciation? And we need to be clear about what we mean by appreciation. Because yes, there's the extra vacation days and there's the time off, there's the closing the office early or the t-shirts, all the swag. But sometimes the best appreciation you can give to someone is to look them square, eye to eye, and just say, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for that exceptional work that you did on that project. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being an incredible part of the team. Thank you for being a leader and a supporter, whatever the thing is. But to directly talk to that person as if there's no one else in the room but them, And let them know that you appreciate that they are on your team, that they are doing great work and that they are just being there because at the end of the day, we all have a choice. We all have a choice in how we show up and whether or not we show up. And while sometimes it feels like we don't have a choice, we always do. And every time you have a team member, an employee, Anyone who shows up to deliver for you that day, they have a choice. And so to appreciate the fact that they showed up and did their best and contributed goes a long way to let people know that you see them, that you see them, you acknowledge that they're there and you acknowledge that they are contributing. So if you have not yet this month, or if you're trying to figure out when you're going to do it again, don't wait for the next performance review or the next whatever formal thing. Maybe take some time and walk around today and just tell people, I appreciate you. I appreciate your being here. I appreciate you being part of the team. From a personal perspective, the big thing about appreciation and especially that and saying thank you, right? Saying thank you, not thanks, but thank you, is that if we stop and pause and appreciate what we've done, where we've been, what we've overcome, right? What we have accomplished. It helps us to kind of quiet some of the stories that are telling us that we're not enough. We don't have enough. We're not ready, right? All of those things that from experience, that's fact, may be creating a story that's not. And if we find ourselves and are aware enough in that, that spiral of, I can't, I got to wait. I need more time. I need more information. I need more whatever, 
When you hear that, pause. Just take a minute and start thinking about all the things you've already done. What are the things you have already overcome? Because you are where you are today because you've gone through some stuff. Some people's stuff is really, really difficult. Some people's stuff is a little bit easier, but we all have stuff and it morphs and changes over time. And so if you can take a moment to just think about all of the stuff that you have overcome, every difficult conversation you've had, every conflict you've been in, every bad boss, every colleague that you trusted and then turned out to be someone who was untrustworthy, every relationship that didn't turn out the way you wanted to, all of that stuff, guess what? You're here. You made it through. You overcame. You found a way to make it work. You found a way to get through because many times the only way to get over something is to go through it. And you did that. If you are here and you are listening to this podcast, you did that. And so sitting in that appreciation starts to short circuit that woe is me. Oh, I can't. What's going on? And start to sit in. No, no, no. Here are the things that I've done really well. Here's how far I've come. And maybe start to change your perspective to if I've gotten over that, then I can absolutely do this. Or let me just think a minute. Let me sit down. I've done it before, maybe for something else. But what can I take about what I learned and translate it into what I'm trying to do now? I had a long conversation again this week, of course, uh, with my therapist talking about this same thing, right? I'm, I'm a person that has a lot of stuff that I love to do and I love to learn. And there are languages I want to learn and places I want to travel and books I want to read and all of these things. And I could feel the spiral starting, right? You can feel the tension start to rise. And I was like, I just don't have enough time. And then I caught myself and I said, no, I don't seem to be able to make the time to do the stuff I really want to do. And I just can't seem to make it happen. And And I'm just not where I need to be. And I mean, just, you know, just madness. And she just kind of paused and said, okay, but let's go back and see all of the things you have done and how far you have come. And then let's regroup and talk about the things you want to do. But the reality is you don't have to do them all today. What are the two, maybe three things that you have to get done By the end of the year, not even today, right? Because I'm thinking, here's my list for today. What are the two to three things to get done by the end of the year that gives you space, right? To take six weeks because there's holidays and there's weekends and there's all this other stuff happening. Say you've got six weeks worth of work. What are the two to three things you really want to accomplish and get focused on those? Prioritize those. And if what you're doing is not aligned with those, then rethink what you're doing. And that totally translated into a conversation I had with my God sister last night. And as I've said, things, God's got to burn a bush for me, right? I don't read signs really well, although I've gotten better now that I've gotten out of the corporate thing and really been paying attention to what I'm hearing, the messages I'm hearing, the things that I'm seeing. And she talked about, my therapist talked about, you know, just the one thing and just, is it really aligned? Is what you're doing aligned with those things you want to accomplish? And I was always talking to my God sister. She was talking about this podcast she was listening to mostly for educators and people in higher ed and, and especially on tenure tracks and how they teach and write and get all this stuff done and time management. And she started talking about how the little tips and tricks were look at everything you're doing and is what you're doing aligned with the thing you say you want to accomplish. If you're teaching, are there lessons that are aligned with your research that are still in line with the class, but also aligned with your research? So it's all going in the same direction. So that was number two, right? And then I get some comments today, earlier before the radio show, about how you focus and what you're focused on and how some things that have been going on in the conversations I've been having have really pointed people in the right direction. Okay. Two or three times, and I'm like, God, I hear you. So that whole idea of picking just a couple of things and then understanding that you have whatever you need to be able to do it. It's that unwinding some of the things that we have been taught or that we've learned, especially if you've grown up in an organization, whether that is higher ed, corporate, nonprofit, whatever it is, where you start by doing the thing, right? You get really good at doing the thing. You become a tactical kind of process doer expert 
And then as you move up in the organization, right, you start leading other people and sometimes you get uncomfortable, but you kind of make it happen. And then the script flips and it's not about your technical expertise anymore. It's about your ability to lead people. How are you talking to them? How are you communicating? Are you clear? Are you consistent? All of those kind of things, all of the how. And here's what happens. When you shift and when you change to do something different or go into a different environment, all of those things that helped you be really great at what you did before, right? Those things that helped you survive really toxic environments become, have become maladaptive, as my therapist says, right? The things that helped you before aren't going to necessarily help you now. But those are the things that we've learned. Those are the tools that we know to be able to get where we want to be or to survive the situation that we're in. And so when you're then in an entrepreneurship role or you're moving to a different career and it's really about, let me just put that thing out there. This is, this is the thing I want to do. Let me get really clear on what I want to accomplish. I have no idea how I'm going to make that happen, but I know what it is and I'm just going to start moving. That's a very different mindset because what happens is we say, this is where I want to go. And then if you've had that training, well, how do I do it? And I don't know how to do it. And I don't even know who to call. And I don't know where to do the research. And, I, and you get in that spiral of, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And it's been two years and you still haven't done the thing. You haven't gotten any closer to the thing that you said you wanted because you got twisted up in the how. And the how will take care of itself if you focus on where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do, right? What is that, that end game that you're going after? And the other piece of that is when you get into those death spirals and you're questioning and not having a level of trust of yourself and of your capabilities, that's another opportunity to pause and say, okay, what have I done? What have I accomplished? I've gone from here to here and I may not be where I want to be, but I'm not where I was. And how did I do that? Here are the things that I know. Here are the things that I experienced. Here is the list of battle scars that I've got. And all of those things are in my toolbox. So when I think about the thing I want to do, I know that I will find a way to do it because I've proven to myself that I can do it because I did it in the past. But we have such a tendency to forget the things we've overcome that we are afraid to sit in that appreciation, right? It's, it's ego, it's, it's arrogance, it's all those other words that we're not supposed to be. But the reality is if we don't take a time to pause and appreciate what we've done, where we've been, what we've learned, all of the people around us who have also taught us and guided us, supported us, sometimes pulled us up by our bootstraps and said, oh, wait, not that. If we don't stop to appreciate all of that, then it's going to be difficult for us to sit in a position of power, which is supported by calm. Having a foundation of appreciation gives you an ability to just be calm, to surrender to the flow. And y'all know that has been my word for this year and it has been the hardest ever to surrender. If we sit in appreciation and appreciate what we've done, we can surrender to whatever is going to come. We can surrender to not knowing the plan for those of us who are type A overachievers, right? And overthinkers. We can surrender to what's going to happen because we know deep down that we can handle whatever it is. It's about trusting ourselves to be able to respond in a way that is going to protect us, sure, but it's also going to move us forward. That is going to give us an opportunity to get where we want to be. And finally, when we think about appreciation and we think about saying thank you, we think about gratitude. The thing I talked about this morning, because words matter, words matter a lot. There is a movie called Just Right. And what I love about that is this idea of thank you. And I don't say thanks. That's, that's not my thing. If you hear me say thanks, that's something's going on. Because it seems casual to me, not genuine. Just, that's just how it lands for me. So I try to be very deliberate in saying thank you. And in this movie, Just Right, it's Common and Queen Latifah. So I mainly watch it because it's Common, right? And Queen Latifah, because Common's just really nice to look at. And go Tiffany Haddish. Um, and so I'm looking at, at this movie and, and I watch it every time it comes on. And there's a point where the character, Common's character, the team has just won, you know, the game. They're going to the playoffs, all this kind of stuff. And after he's had an injury and Queen Latifah's character has helped him, helped him come back. 
And he goes into the green room and there are all the reporters and all that kind of stuff. And he hugs his mom and then he goes to her and he hugs her and he pulls back and he says, thank you. And she said, no problem. My pleasure. And he said, no, thank you. He was deliberate. He looked at her directly, almost through her and wanted to make sure that he conveyed how much he appreciated what she had done for him. So in this month, of gratitude, of appreciation. Take some time, maybe even look in the mirror and say thank you to you for how far you've come, for the resilience that you've had, for all of the things that you have accomplished, for the battles that you have fought and lost and the battles that you have fought and won. Say thank you to yourself. Sit in appreciation for everything that you've been through, that those battle scars that you've developed that have given you an intestinal fortitude and a strength that you probably have only scratched the surface of. And I invite you for this month to join me in a daily journaling gratitude, even if it's five seconds to just pause and say, thank you. Every day, do some sort of appreciation. Give yourself an opportunity to change your perspective. That attitude of gratitude is a powerful thing. And if you think about appreciation, you think about the things you are thankful for, you can change your perspective on everything that's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot tell you how honored and humbled I am by the fact that you spend time listening and downloading and commenting on this podcast, my little baby podcast, Um, or as my producer said, it's not a baby. (laughs) It's a big baby podcast. I am so genuinely honored and appreciative of your time because you have a choice. You have a choice in what you listen to. You have a choice in where you spend your time. And the fact that you choose to spend some of that downloading and listening to me, um, I am honored and humbled and I will keep doing it because I'm just surprised at how much I love it. And I love sharing these messages with you. And I hope that what I say is a message that you need to hear when you need to hear it. Thanks for tuning again one more week. We'll see you for the next hundred. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been watching The Rutledge Perspective. Thank you for tuning in. If we have given you a different perspective or if you've learned something new that you hadn't thought about before, please subscribe to The Rutledge Perspective podcast where you get your favorite podcasts and give us a like on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher. We really appreciate it. And your feedback is important as well as we use that to inform our next episodes. You can also head over to my website, laurelrutledge.com and download a freebie called Where's My Mojo that can really help you get out of your rut or maybe talk you back off that ledge of frustration. You can also find previous episodes of The Rutledge Perspective on laurelrutledge.com. I really appreciate your tuning in. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.